My mind is a barren landscape. Tumbleweeds. Vampires. Hobos. Permanently adrift. Grasping. For meaning. I don't take it personally that my mind is thus. I regard my mind as an aberration. I'm only here because you're fascinated with anomaly. Assuredly, I do not regard myself as such. I am permanently enamored with my quirks. There is nothing wrong with me. But is there something wrong with you? May I suggest that we look thoroughly deep in your eyes to see if something is wrong with you. You know, when the ear doctor looks in your ears and goes <whistles> to test, to see if there's too much earwax Blocking the transmission, I'm looking in your eyes right now. To see if there's a soul inside. I have an entire room here. Filled with experimental apparatus. I'm quite proud of my experimental apparatus. In college, my professor approached me gleefully. Do you enjoy our experimental apparatus? And I turned to him, and my mind, being the barren wasteland of quirky tumbleweeds, of besotted vampires, turned to my professor and said, I like the experimental apparatus. I am quite enamored with all the potentiality in my visual field, Professor. Ah, well, wonderful. But I do have a question for you, sir, if I may. What is the pearl of apparatus? Why, well, it's apparatuses. <laughs> And just then, the lightning went through my brain and vaporized everything. I couldn't handle it. I shrunk in disdain. Contempt. Not so much for my professor as much as for the English language itself. Vile. My college professor didn't know what to say, naturally. He was just so enamored with all the experimental apparatus before him. Apparatuses. Oh! Yeah. 
Eureka. Pure epiphany right here. That lightning cleared it all out for me. I realized as if in a nanosecond of pure, unadulterated realization that the experimental apparatus of the physical world would not help me. I could no longer avail myself of the experimental apparatus of the physical world. So I looked my professor in the eye and I said to him, excuse me, sir, I'm done. I'm done. What's more? I'm done being your student. Come here. Sit down. It's time for me to conduct an experiment on your mind with the apparatus of mine. Sit. Professor, ignore all these other students congregating around us. Shh, all of you. Be quiet. Elect a representative to speak to me during this very precarious time. I'm going to conduct an etheric lobotomy on said professor. It's professor. Yes? Professor? Yes. Your time is over. Professor. No more authority for you. Professor. I am in control now. It's as you say. May I know what I should call you? Call me the lobotomist. Should I simply distrust that you know what you're doing and will not harm me? Oh, I will harm you, Professor. I'm the lobotomist. You and all of your students here are addicted to the same paradigm. Authority. Centralized and thus concretized. Experimental apparatus, but really the ultimate objective is subjugation of the human mind. So let's be honest about it, Professor. The lobotomist is here, and now I'm taking questions from the class, but from one of you, one of you, all of you pull your curiosity into one streamlined thought and present it to your elected representative. That would be me. I guess that would be me. Fine. No one is opposing you. Everybody is awestruck and gobsmacked that I would take over, but I had the lightning moment and my mind has been cleared. The experimental apparatus is here. It's time to clean the mind. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Lobotomist. We are all mesmerized. You seem to just have awakened. 
Tell me if that's a question. Yes? Mr. Lepotomist, it's a question. Did you just suddenly awaken here in the laboratory and now you're you're new? You're a new man? Call me Dr. Lepotomist. Or really, I like the sound. Take off the tea. Dr. Lobotomus. I like this. I like it. This professor has been in control too long. And you, the cadre, the meager cadre of students have enabled him because he's enabling you and that's got to come to an end. Tell me your name. My name is Gavin. Tell me why you were in this professor's class. Tell me now, Gavin. I was, uh... Well, it's just part of requirements for graduation, I guess. Yes, Gavin, it is. All of these experimental apparatuses. Look at them. How paltry. You're going to conduct it. little experiments. Tinker. With this physical realm, it's so tedious, isn't it? Gavin? Yeah, yes, 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 Dr. Lobotomus. It really is, but we do this because we have to. I know. I know. Your brain's poor little brains. I'm going to solve the problem for you. See, we all have this ideological fixation that a savior figure shall come and undergo the ultimate sacrifice for our well-being. Well, Professor, it's your day. And Dr. Lobotomus is here. Only now, 2,000 years later, from that original fixation, from that original redemption and salvation here in this classroom, we're going to split the primal motif into Dr. Lobotomus and his professor. You are the lamb. Professor, let's hear you. I am in power here, Professor. Let's hear you. <laughs> Now, we're on the same page, aren't we? There are many sins for us to redeem. Aren't there, Professor? <laughs> yes. Tell me what they are. <laughs> Tell me. Stop bleeding. Stop bleating. I'm just telling these students what to do. That's all that I do, I just tell them. And they do it. I tell them what to think. And they think it. Yes, you do, Professor. What a tragedy, as you're here under the auspices of this noble idea 
that you are illuminating and freeing their souls. It's a lie, isn't it, Professor? <laughs> Stop bleating. It's a lie. Sir, Dr. Lobotomus, may I, may I ask you a question? Yes. Gavin, ask us a question. What if we want to be here and, and be told what to think because deep down inside we don't have the self-esteem to think for ourselves and even though everybody tells us that we need to learn how to think, we're just actually believing that because that's the brainwashing. Do you see what I mean, Dr. Lobotomus? Yes. You're told that you'll be a free thinker by going to college and succumbing to the professors. Isn't that a wild? Isn't that bizarre? Isn't that macabre? You become a free thinker by subjugating your mind to the authority of the university. This professor tells you what to think, tells you what to do. That is why I am removing his brain. He has contaminated all of you, and now he is the lamb. Now the redemption is a bifurcation, a twofold redemption. This is the new salvation. These professors, all of them have to get new brains. Sir, it, this sounds like a bloody revolution, like purging intellectuals so that you can eliminate the intelligentsia and impose your reform through coercion. That's what you're trying to do through coercion. Coercion? Dr. Lobotomus? Using coercion? You students, you don't really get it, do you? How can I say this in a way that makes sense to you? You've known nothing but coercion your whole lives. Why do you think this moment of removing the professor's brain is more coercive than any other moment. Dr. Lobotomus removes the professor's brain as a gift to you. As a gift! And if I raise my voice, it's because you're hard of hearing. Too much cognitive wax. You've known nothing but coercion your whole life, and now one remedial action is too much. Oh, Dr. Lobotomus is a bully. Dr. Lobotomus removes the professor's brain. This isn't a brain here, is it, Professor? No, oh, Dr. Lobotomus, it's not. Tell me what your brain is, Professor. I don't think I have much of a brain. No, you don't. Gavin, you've heard it from the horse's mouth, he knows. And you know, stop fucking around, Gavin. There is no brain here. This is just a mere technicality, rhetorical flourish. This is a programmed matrix in the form of a neocortex. Designed for one purpose, Gavin. To subjugate you. You're going to be part of the priestly caste of intellectuals yourself, right? That's why you're getting your graduate degree, your PhD 
your bachelor's, whatever it is, you want to be part of the priestly class of intellectuals who rule over everyone without a brain to ensure that they do not have a brain because you do not have a brain. Nobody has a brain. Nobody. And by brain, I mean what? Tell me, Gavin. Tell me, Professor, what do I mean by brain? You mean mind. Correct. They are not the same. But for the intents and purposes of this lobotomy, we will treat them as such. I'm going to remove your brain so that you, Gavin, Professor, can grow a mind. Because you see, you don't have a mind. You only have a brain. And that's, well, you don't even understand. How much of a tragedy that truly is. Dr. Lepotamus, I am really excited to get rid of my brain and to grow a mind. Good. all this experimental apparatus. We're going to give you a mind, but really just a seed of a mind. And you have to grow it yourself, Professor and Gavin and all of you students gathered round. See, I was struck by lightning right here. What we call the crown chakra in the esoteric Eastern traditions. Mind suddenly appeared. More than a seed. A full grown effusion of illumination. And then I saw the professor, pathetic creature, and all of his groundlings, you. And yes, it changed the room. See what you see. There's a bunch of flesh and vanity. What do I see? matrix, but not a screen of streaming green, like raindrops on a windshield, not at all. Overflowing radiant sentience, and the mind cannot get there. what I've been calling the brain. So I should say the brain cannot get there. Until it's replaced by the mind. Gavin, you speak for this assortment, this motley crew of students Anxious to get the degrees to become cogs in the machine. Tell me, Gavin. Are you ready? After I remove the professor's brain, are you next in line? I, I, I would need to see some empirical data that would just kind of like... <laughs> Uh, underpin what you're saying. Like, I guess, if you're gonna remove his brain, I need to see, you know, clinical, experimental, whatever, data to suggest that you're not, in fact, just mutilating and 
murdering our professor. Oh, you will see. Right now. Professor. Open. And receive. I am now removing your brain, Professor. I can feel it. Just removing your brain. Scraping it out of your skull. With my etheric fingers, just... Be patient, Professor. I can feel it. Yes? Just a few moments more. And now the professor has a mind. It's as easy as that, isn't it? All of you so terrified by the prospect of invasive surgery where I split his skull and reach in and extract his brain. It's truly gruesome. That's worthy of a horror film. That's not what I'm doing here. Who's next? Gavin? Are you ready to sacrifice your brain for the benefit of mankind? Because your brain is useless, Gavin. All of your brains are useless. All of them. You're learning things that are completely immaterial and irrelevant to your well-being as individuals and the well-being of the whole planet. In fact, your brains are destroying civilization. How is that? Did you know that every time that you get into college and you enroll to get your degrees to be the cog in the machine, you're actually destroying civilization? because you're feeding your brain at the expense of the mind. Professor, tell these children how different it looks. I don't have words for it. And you won't have words for it for some time, Professor, but tell them what you feel. Energy and sentience is primary. All thoughts. All feelings. Everything. Is secondary. Very important, but a distant. Distant. Second. All of your brains are in the way. All of them. They perform the opposite of what you believe they're doing. You're doing the opposite, all of you. All of you. Well said, Professor. Well said. Gavin, groundlings. There is only a seed of mind in the professor now. As that seed blossoms with time. He will become Dr. Lobotomus.
he will help everyone in his orbit. I wasn't always Dr. Lobotomus. I was just like you, Kevin. <laughs> only, only 30 minutes ago. Or so it seems, but really what you begin to understand in truly 30 minutes from now, the professor will be fully grown. 30 minutes from now, it's really remarkable, the transformation. is instantaneous children mind knows no time sure the lesser gradations of mind yes they are enmeshed in time but sentience itself that is mind Your brain gets in the way. Who would like their next lobotomy? I'm taking volunteers. Raise your hand. Professor, I have uh, gathered enough empirical data Gavin, you haven't gathered any empirical data. Your mongering for empirical data is... <laughs> we just eliminated a sheep and sacrificed the lamb. Empirical data. Look directly. At the truth, Gavin, you don't have a mind, you have a brain. Are you ready? The brain cannot make the leap. Because the brain knows it is the sacrifice of the lamb. I do have a question for you, Doctor. Lobotomus. Are you a vampire? You mentioned that your mind is a desolate wasteland. And you mentioned being a vampire. Before I let go of my brain and embrace the mind, I need to know if you are a vampire. Not a vampire, no. I don't need your energy. However, the entire planet does. So we must reflect on whether the planet itself is a vampire, sucking your energy out of you. Because it's so desperate. So in need. To see you bleed. So in need to see you bleed. During the initial stages of transformation, all sorts of huh, shifty, shady thoughts traverse the landscape. Let them be. When your brain is removed and your mind fills the void, all sorts of crazy relics and vestiges and dull artifacts 
of the slave brain remain for a moment or two energetic traces nothing to be too concerned about Dr. Lobotomus how do you know Uh, you are not under the influence of some demonic force. Every time you talk, <laughs> I get this thought. That uh, you're possessed and that we need to do an exorcism. Dr. Lobotomus is not possessed. He is speaking the truth. The true exorcism needs to happen in all of you. Your brain is worthless. You are educated as if you were machines. <laughs> Gavin, no one cares about you. They only care about themselves, and so Dr. Lobotomus is here. Dr. Lobotomus is here because he cares. When I, just moments ago, when I was teaching you, instructing you with this banal pedagogy, this academic nonsense, really, I did not care for you, Gavin, nor for you, my groundlings, I did not care. I was just doing it for my salary and for my reputation, and just hoping to get out of here on time so I could go back to my office and work on my next book. None of these academic institutions truly care, because they're all brain. All of them. Brains and even those institutions that have some mind, well, they're competing in a world of brains. And so their minds are constantly sabotaged due to the conflict. They can't operate unrestricted. They cannot operate unlimited. They're always fending off disaster, and that takes its toll on the mind. They fight the good fight, but they are a dying clan. Professor? Yes, Gavin? You now sound like Dr. Lobotomus, and I'm just a little bit afraid of that. The mind is powerful. I know. I know, Professor, but now you're just sounding like the Borg. Like you sound like Dr. Lobotomus now. I suspect that is the case. Dr. Lobotomus is only... 40 minutes old. I can't be much more than 10 minutes old. We're going to sound alike as we emerge from the pupa. Ascensions. I suspect that Dr. Lobotomus and I will diverge at some point, diffract into different frequencies of consciousness, and go our separate ways. But for now, we just hatched. Don't be afraid. Have faith. As I said, Your brain cannot make the leap. As the good professor has just said, you must leap. We're talking about the destruction of your brain. You've come to the end of the line. You're here listening to us. You have seen a very 
faint vision of what could be. Contrast that with slavery. There is a moment, an incentive. It's here. We're not going to be around for long, Gavin. We have places to go, people to meet. Brains to eliminate. See, as the professor now understands, brains are really truly the problem. A planet full of brains is a diseased beast. A planet of minds is a miracle. A feast. One mind at a time, they say, yes. But when a brain says it, and just talking about. Brains and brains and brains, it just rains, brains. Stains of brains. All these people feigning with their braining. Okay. I'll do it. I'm next. Professor? It's time. Your first brain, go to it. Thank you, Dr. Lobotomus. Thank you. Gavin, close your eyes with me. And bring all your attention into the energy between your ears. Bring it there. Concentrate, focus, stay. As I remove your brain, and replace it with mind. And now, go forth. Help heal the planet. Remove everybody's brains and replace them with minds. That is what we are called to do as we evolve. Thank you, Professor. And now I see why we are evolving and what we're doing. Yes, you do. And you're precocious, Gavin. You know, I. I do. I do know. I know we're being upgraded. I can feel it. I can feel. Already, I can feel the lightning where my brain once was. I saw lightning as if my brain was just tiny, tiny sparks. Tiny electrical surges of minimal sentience I could feel now, the difference. I can feel it. I know what I must do. Yes. I'm happy to report that the Professor and Gavin now have minds groundlings. So very, very quick. Not more than 45 minutes ago, I was struck by the lightning, and now two more. 
individuals that quick. The entire landscape electrifies, no longer barren with tumbleweeds and vampires. The entire landscape electrifies with sentience, vivifies with mind. The three of us here together. We are being upgraded, all ye groundlings. to a galactic civilization. By means of these experimental apparatuses, you fear for your safety. I understand, groundlings. I fear for your safety, too as long as you have a brain. I do not fear for your safety when you have a mind. Groundlings. It's time. It's time. You have families. Tell me if you care about them. Do you want them to suffer? Immeasurably in the days to come when everything shatters around them. Dr. LaBarnes, what do we do about our families? Is that battle? that you mentioned in the academic realm, it's in the family too. Brains consume the mind. Yes, they do. The brains. Dr. Lobotomous Professor, the brains themselves are the vampires. Yes, they are. But how? How, how, Dr. Lobotomous, tell me how you were able to make the transformation. Can't answer that, Gavin. I only have a, a sophisticated guess. My guess is that we are all souls and we have undergone so many millions of incarnations and finally in this lifetime and perhaps in many lifetimes before this one we animated our physiology such that it received, could receive, the message. Every lifetime after this lifetime, our souls must continue to animate our physiologies and, and illuminate them from within so that they are receptive. All these nerves and nadis and chakras and meridians and all of it. Nice little Eastern way to say we're receiving sentience. Receiving sentience from where, Doctor? The sentience is omnipresent. We are but sponges and amplifiers of this omnipresent sentience, and yet this material it has its own condensations, cores. Each galaxy has a center, a galactic center. And all of that 
energy is streaming out. It's rarefied and highly subtle, streaming energy, galactic emanations from the center of the galaxy. And our physiology soaks them up every time we turn ourselves toward the sun. Sun is sentience, isn't it, Professor? Yes. Yes, it is, Gavin. And tell me, Gavin, how you knew that I knew. I just know that you know what I don't know, but now... I'm starting to know. I'm... Soaking it up. Groundlings. My former classmates. Groundlings, hear me. I am going to diverge from the professor. I am diverging from the lobotomist because I see very clearly and there is no offense to my predecessors, to you, Professor, and to you, Doctor, the great Doctor. Groundlings, former classmates, you do not need to depend on me or the Professor. Noble precursors, extraordinary gentlemen. You can do this yourselves. Once you see that it's done by us three, you can do it yourself. Just close your eyes and put your hands to the side of your mind. That's right. The mind is already there, deeply buried inside the brain. Put your hands to the side of your mind and expand that seed until it eats the brain from inside out and dissolves it in your skull. Do it now. Do it now, classmates, groundlings, all of you. Everyone watching, do it now. Brains consume the planet. Minds consume the brain. Minds redeem civilization. Do it now. <sighs> Bathe in the galactic emanations from the core. They activate you right here in the third eye, as they say. <sighs> right there in the pineal gland. Ooh, expansion. Detonation. Explosion. Hear ye. Hear ye. All ye groundlings. Today is the day. Why delay? You have been ensnared in an illusion. It's not your fault, though it is your responsibility to remedy. You keep thinking with your brains that you are the denizen of this sack of flesh. You're not. Listen to me. Yes, this is Gavin with my two illustrious cohorts. Professor, Doctor, 
Yes, we are the new priests, but we are not here to subjugate you as most hierophants are, who are the commanders of castes. There's no caste here. We are priests, but we're priests of the mind that resides inside your brain, a little speck. That is your mind. We are priests of one another, and we are not from around here. Listen to me, the transformation is instantaneous. The metamorphosis is glorious. It only takes a moment. It is the most frightful moment, terrifying. Revelation, the great disclosure of your true identity. And now you get to decide what you're going to do with your mind. You know who you are. And the transformation is so quick, it's the speed of light. Because it is light. Sentience is light. Light is the sentience of the mind. Can you see the light in my eyes? Go forth. You will meet so many brains along the way. Do not battle the brains. They're not ready. And that's okay. There is going to be a stratification. There has always been a stratification, groundlings. You are in a lower strata. That's okay. I was only minutes ago. The professor, doctor. Not even an hour has gone by. And we are effectively a new species. It cannot be denied. Look at me. Look at the light in my eyes. I am here to redeem all those who are trapped in their brains because we cannot continue this way. We are emerging. We are going to higher frequencies, vibrations, densities, as they say, you brains. As much as I love you, and I do my best to love you every day. You're caught in the third density. But believe me, oh, you'll like it so much better here. <laughs>